Before we start the video guys, I did a podcast with Five Pillars, Dili Hussein, on conspiracies. I'll put the link in the description, check it out. We covered some good topics and I did have my back towards the wall, but I thought I held myself quite well to be honest. Smile to Jen, yeah. <laughs> Asalaamu Alaikum guys and welcome to a... How do I describe this? Storming Area 51. It started off as a Facebook group, yeah, which was clearly a prank, but it's generated quite a following. In September of 2019, the people get together and storm Area 51 and see what evidence they're hiding. For those of you guys that don't know, Area 51 is a secret government facility that's supposedly linked to alien research. I think I'm like two weeks too late. So what I did guys was I took the most convincing evidences I could find and I compiled it into this very short video for us to have a look. Let's start off with the NSA, the National Security Agency. Be advised that the National Security Agency does not have any interest in UFOs in any manner. This was proved false when Peter Gertsen obtained CIA files under the 1974 Freedom of Information Act. In fact, when the issue went to the Supreme Court, the NSA admitted they had 156 classified files on UFOs. So they lied. Is there any wonder then that people believe that these people are hiding something? Let's move on to Roswell. When it comes to aliens and UFOs, the most convincing and controversial case is that of Roswell, New Mexico and US and A. In 1947, a farmer came across some wreckage on his land. The wreckage was like a foil-like material which when you crumple it up, it returns back to its original shape without any evidence of it being crumpled up. He reported it to the sheriff and before you know it, the US Army had sealed the place up. Five days later, Lieutenant Walter Hort triggered the headlines RAAF captures flying saucer. The next day however, the government changed the story to it being called a crashed weather balloon. <sighs> 47 years later, they admitted it was actually a top secret mogul balloon and they lied to hide this knowledge. In a 25 page report titled The Roswell Report Case Closed in 24th June 1994. And then if that's not enough, they released another report called The Roswell Report Truth Versus Fiction and they said dummies were dropped from a high altitude balloon. So when the government admits to lying and covering things up and changing their report more than I've changed my underpants in the last couple of days. I don't need to mate because I do a stinger and all that isn't it? Is it any wonder that people don't trust them and actually believe that they are aliens? Alright, let's move on to Project Blue Book. Project Blue Book collected, analyzed and recorded more than 13,000 sightings between 1952 and 1970. They published their findings in 14 reports, but the number 13 was missing. <laughs> so first they said they purposely missed it out because people associate it to be an unlucky number. Then after Stanton Friedman found evidence it was there and was classified, they claimed it was still in draft form. <sighs> it still hasn't been released. If there's nothing to declare, then why lie and feed the conspiracies? Alright, next we go across the pond back into the UK. Let's start off with Room 801. Britain had a place in Whitehall called Room 801 where they dealt with UFO reports. Now they shifted to RAF Rudlow Manor. They wrote a document on Formby's work investigating UFOs which is still classified. Seeing the government dedicate people, time, money and space to these sorts of things 
And then they keep evidence hidden, it does beg the question, what have they got to hide? Finally guys, we go to Rendlesham Forest, which is known as the Roswell of the UK. It took place in 1980 next to the US Air Force Base near Ipswich. In 2002 it was ruled that the UK Ministry of Defence had conspired to prevent knowledge becoming known. What a surprise! Alright guys, so what's common in all these things? Well, it's the military. And we all know that the military capability is literally decades ahead of the technology that we see. So it wouldn't be surprising that they want to keep this technology hidden, test it, and of course sometimes these tests don't go according to plan and then they have to cover it up. And if people are to believe in aliens and conspiracies rather than exposing their technology to enemy combatants, I think they're okay with that. If there was an alien landing, the likelihood of the government actually telling us about it is very slim because they clearly don't trust us and to be fair it would spread widespread panic. So storming Area 51 might not be a bad idea after all. But seeing as they've told the government they're planning to do this in September, if there is any evidence there, most likely it's gonna be moved. Anyways guys, what do you think about all of this? What's your opinion? Let me know in the comments below and until next time guys, Salaamu Alaikum.